Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at how to create a logo using Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator CS6, the new image trace feature inside Illustrator. So what we're going to start off with is actual photograph. I have the photo in Photoshop. We need to work on it first. And then we're going to take that photograph over to Illustrator, trace it into a silhouette and basically make it part of our logo. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, um, the logo is actually for my friend Candace here, and the name of her company is Fit Candy. So Fit and then the word K-A-N-D-I. And I thought it'd be great if we actually use this fitness shot of her leaping in the air. She's kind of in the shape of a K. So why not? The problem is this particular shot is both Photoshop and Illustrator's worst nightmare as far as separating her out because she's different color, different tones against black and graffiti and all kinds of other things going on in this shot that Illustrator would never be able to separate her out easily. And even Photoshop would have some difficulty separating her out with all the similar colors and tones, but we're gonna do our best. And again, we don't have to make this a perfect extraction. We're not gonna composite her on against, against a different background, so we can kind of have a little leeway here. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be in the shape of uh, our figure here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with just a simple quick select. I usually start off with that because as the name implies, it's quick. It will make a quick selection and again, even quick select is having difficulty trying to figure out what I want to do here because it's saying, oh, you want all that? And I'm saying, no, I don't want all that. I just want some of that. So I'm doing the option or alt key to subtract. And of course, just letting go with the plus sign to add. So I'm just subtracting out the pieces I don't want and letting it add in the pieces I do want. And again, it's just having a real hard time trying to figure out what I want because of all the different colors, but we almost got it. Let's go ahead and finish up here. And even the black armband against the black wall, I mean, come on, how's it gonna know which pieces I want? So we'll just go ahead and try and help it as best we can. And we'll just get this last leg in here. And same thing here, Her the shadow behind her leg is difficult because it's the same color as the wall. It's a dark shadow against the dark wall. So just not the easiest selection I've ever thrown at <laughs> thrown at Photoshop. Now, at this point, we could just, you know, duplicate this selection onto its own layer and we would kind of have the shape we need. That's kind of all we need. But if you really wanted to do a better job of the selection, kind of end up with more room to play, so to speak, then that's when I would go ahead and use the refine edge tools that are built into Photoshop. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I'm gonna go ahead, instead of just duplicating this onto its own layer and not knowing what pieces I missed and what pieces I didn't miss, uh, what I'm gonna do is take it to the next level. We'll just go ahead and click Refine Edge. And Refine Edge, I've got it set to show it on a white background. It kind of will give me a good idea of what I got, what I missed, what, um, what needs work, what doesn't need work. Now normally I'd spend a lot of time trying to refine the hair and make the hair separate out. But again, I don't care. As long as it's in the shape of her head, that's good enough. Uh, but we will turn on the smart radius, pump it up a little bit there. We'll also decontaminate the colors because not only will that take some of that reflective color out of her, which I don't really care about, but what it will do by default is give us this whole thing when we're done on a new layer with a layer mask because we definitely will need that. And again, I can, I can shift the edge to kind of constrain it, kind of uh, move it in some or out some if I thought that would be better. Um, but again, it's, not, it's just not going to do a great job here in this particular case. It's not going to make it a whole lot better. We can also uh, feather it a little bit to try and soften it. We can smooth it. We can work with the contrast. We can work with all these features. But at the end of the day... <laughs> Uh, this is just not a great selection because of all the different colors that were exactly the same. Black shadows against the black wall. The shoe had a real hard time there. And I'm just going to not spend a whole lot of time in this dialog box because, again, I don't need a perfect selection. I need it to be more of a perfect shape. So let's go ahead and, again, decontaminate colors. It will give us a output it to a new layer mask. 
We'll go ahead and click OK. And that will do it. It basically turned off the background, which was there, and gave us our new layer, more importantly, with a layer mask. So I just selected that layer mask, and now I can use my paintbrush, uh, just hit the letter B there, and when I'm on white, I am taking the mask away, which I'll undo that, and when I'm on black, I'm adding the mask, or I'm masking more. So we can zoom in on this, and we can say, you know, I kind of want a little bit better job under the leg there. Now again, I'm on a soft brush, and normally that's what I work on for most things like this, but I do want this to kind of be a hard edge. I want this to be the shape of her body, not so much, uh, not so much worried about the, um, uh, the colors or anything blending in like that. So again, just kind of filling in these areas that got cut off. Missing part of the shoe there, missing part of the leg there. And again, we will uh, switch back and forth. I'm just hitting the letter X to switch between black and white to mask and unmask. And you know what? I really don't need the laces in this. Well, you know what? Let's leave the laces in. Uh, they are. They do define the shoe. So we'll leave that in. And this really bad part under the arm here. Oops, wrong color. Really bad part under the arm. We definitely want to fix this. And you would take your time, go around the subject, mask and basically get it perfect get it the way you want and i'm working with a wacom pen here so this makes it a little bit easier my hand can be a little steadier and of course you'd make your brush size smaller or bigger as needed to go around the edges now i'm not going to spend a lot of time cleaning this up because you kind of get it's you know it's going to take a few minutes to get this just right and of course switching back and forth between black and white and the main thing we're trying to do is get the outline here get the pieces we missed and I'm even okay with a slight black edge around it because that will help us once we get the illustrator with our tracing. Okay, so um, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna zoom out and you would know that I would keep working on that and ultimately what I would end up with is this. This is the one I finished. So same thing, I just worked around it with the mask. I ended up cropping it to just the shape of her that I needed. And I could even spend a little bit more time on this mask. I'm kind of like seeing stuff, seeing stuff under the arm here that I'm still not quite. Okay, if I could get the right color there, that I'm not quite happy with. There you go. That's a little cleaner there. But you get the idea. You just keep getting it till you get the shape you want. So I got the shoes in there. Got a nice shoe shape shoe or shoe shape there and got this the way I want. So then we're gonna go ahead and just save this Photoshop file, uh, complete with its layer mask, bl um, blocking out the background. And now we can go ahead and head over to Adobe Illustrator. So in Illustrator, I've got just a blank document here and this is where we're gonna have, this is where we get to have our fun. So we'll just go ahead and say file, place, and we'll just go ahead and place that native Photoshop file. We could also just open it, but um, I've got it ready to be placed here. And let's see, this is the one we just did. And it's just giving me a warning there about the image, original image was 16 bit, and this is now converting it down to eight. Okay, so there's our Photoshop file uh, placed on the canvas, and it is now ready for image trace. So we'll head over to image trace while it's selected. Got to have something selected for this to work. And Image Trace has all these great presets in it. So I very rarely have to work with any of the options, advanced options or anything, because the presets work so well. Now, just for kicks, I don't want this in color, but I just thought, I wonder what that would do in color. So I could go in and I could say, show me a low fidelity photo. Like, just quickly trace that and show it to me as a vector in color. Because you never know, maybe your client might one day want a photographic logo in color. And this is what it did. This is all vector, people. This is, this is no longer pixels. It retraced this and recolored this as a vector image. This is just how good the, the new image trace works inside Illustrator and how fast it is now because it's 64-bit. So again, I, I love that. That's awesome that that's now a vector logo. And I'm just going to go ahead and go to uh, silhouettes. Now, I, you might get a better result with silhouettes. You might get a better result with black and white logo. That's up to you. So I can show you the difference between the two. 
Black and white kind of leaves more of the face. Eh, I'm not so happy about the arm. Looks more like a skeleton in there. But the face, actually, that part I do like. So I might, I might mix these two where I trace one one way and one the other way and join them together. But you kind of get the idea. One is a little bit more forgiving for black and white logos versus a silhouette trying to make it all black um, wherever it thinks it should. And because the shoe wasn't closed there, it kind of left the shoes white as they are. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. So we've got our logo. We've got our vector image. And by the way, if we expand this, this is our path. So we could fill this now with whatever color we want. We can do whatever we want to do with it. We can start bending the arm here. We can twist it. We can make it bigger, make it smaller, whatever we want to do. But now I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. And we'll head over to the logo area where I was working on this. And the K is going to go right here. So we'll just go ahead and paste it in. And of course, it's big. Let's go ahead and scale it down. And again, resolution independent. So I don't have to worry about the size because I am working in vectors here. Oh, and there's one problem. It's a backwards K. So the K is great, but it's going the wrong way. So what we'll do is we'll right click on this and we'll use the transform reflect. And that will automatically reflect it vertically. We could do it horizontally, which would be up and down, but vertically is what I want. We'll just click okay. And that will flip it around. Okay, so now we have our Fit Candy custom logo. Oops, a little too close there. Custom logo with the actual owner of the company as the logo using uh, a silhouette from a photograph in Photoshop. So that's how quickly and easily you can now incorporate photographs as vector images inside your Illustrator artwork, your Illustrator logos. Um, I'm still working with the typography on this, different fonts you know, that you may want to use. But you get the idea that this is just, just, just fast and cool to be able to do this. I spent more time in Photoshop getting the image ready than it actually took for Illustrator to trace it. So that's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.